Every pilot wants to own their own aircraft when they get out of the military. Typically, they own a little Cessna or a small prop plane. Not this Marine. He decides to get a fighter jet. Let's go. I had the great fortune <laughs> in the Marine Corps to fly Harriers. It was not my first choice. I wanted to fly fighters, and the Harrier had a very bad reputation at the time, but that's what I was assigned. Now, for those of you who've never seen it, they call it the Harrier Jump Jet because it can fly up, stop in midair, fly forward. It's got all sorts of unique abilities. The British had it and the Marine Corps had it. I don't believe any other service in the United States deployed it. It's a very interesting aircraft to see. And this guy bought one from the UK for $176,000. Now, had to have it shipped over. We'll keep going and get more into that. And after my first flight in a two-seater, I was hooked. I was just amazing what the airplane could do compared to the other airplanes I had been flying, which was the A4. Look at that. <laughs> For me, the Harrier symbolizes uh, an iconic Marine Corps airplane. It's now you see how it lands, so it can use a short runway, a damaged runway. There's a single seater, and there's very few, but there are some two seaters. If you ever, like I say, see one of these things in action, it just blows your mind. It's like a helicopter sort of plane. Can't carry big cargo, but you can fit them out all sorts of ways. By a couple other countries, but the Marines recognized the potential of this airplane back in the early 70s. It was the first foreign-built airplane in U.S. military inventory since World War I. Our whole focus is on supporting that 19-year-old rifleman on the ground and whatever he needs. That's the center of the Marine Corps universe is the infantry, everything else is support. After about three or four years in the squadron and making deployments all over the world, I was selected to be the single Marine to attend the U.S. Air Force Test Pilot School. You name wow. it, I flew it. I retired from the military and became a real estate investor slash developer. And now this guy's no chump. 22 years in the Marine Corps, gets out as Lieutenant Colonel, went to Annapolis, becomes a pilot. He's not flying big cargo planes. He gets chosen for the test pilot program. So, you know, one hell of a pilot, super duper selective to get in to become a pilot, no less fly fighter planes, no less become a test pilot. To hit it at Tom Cruise shit. I worked hard. I'm not, not denying that. And I built up a pretty good company, but I realized on him. that my real passion was not unstopping toilets. That's not what <laughs> drives me. I went to an air show. I saw the airplanes and I got the bug again. I says, I had all these qualms in the Marine Corps. What would it take me to be a civilian pilot? I started doing some investigation and I found that, that I could, in fact, get qualified to fly these airplanes. And I ended up buying a Russian Yak 3. Uh, it's kind of like a, a P-51 Mustang. It's a little bit smaller than a P-51 with a little bit bigger engine. Very, very hot World War II fighter. Because of that rush. Now, for those of you that are into flying, you know the amount of maintenance that goes into this thing. So it's not like a car. For us average Joes, you can leave something not working. Plane, obviously, shit's got to work. Got to be safe flying. It's all sorts of FAA inspections and requirements. I don't even understand. So getting foreign planes, no less planes are out of service, seems like this guy must have money burning a hole in his pocket. I had a tough time giving that airplane away to air shows. I would go to an air show just for a tank full of fuel, just to have fun, just to get the experience, just to build the resume. And a lot, that's not unusual. A lot of people do that. But I saw that the real star of the air show was the Harrier. The audience reacts differently to the Harrier than it does to any other act. It's differently to the Blue Angels, different to the Thunderbirds. People just absolutely stop what they're doing and they look at the airplane. I never knew what I was going to be doing at 61 years old, but it, it, it certainly didn't include flying a Harrier. You think about that with a helicopter, right? You've seen the helicopters where they're almost like wings rotate, I'm going to call it, as a novice. It can go up and down and forward. This thing can do just that, so you can land in really tight spots. Now, why you need to land there, I guess, to refuel or something. Maybe mid-air refueling wasn't an option. The utility of it, I'm not sure, not some sort of aviation military expert. But seeing them in action, your brain kind of stops and go, planes don't do that. They don't just stop in mid-air and go down. They go forward, right? Here at air shows. 
Harrier jump jets have flown in active service for the last time. After almost 40 years of service, they've been scrapped as part of the coalition's spending cuts. I read an article that the Brits were surplusing their sea harriers. I thought, this is our opportunity to get one. I had some feelers out on a Monday morning. I opened up my email. It says, hey, we found one. It's complete. It's intact. It looks like it just flew in the other day. There's another bidder for it. If you're interested, you better get your money together and get over here. Before I actually bought the airplane, I called the FAA up. I said, what's it take to get qualified in a unique, one-of-a-kind jet airplane? <laughs> he says, what is it? And I said, now, can you imagine that conversation? Put your head into that. You're on the phone. You call the FFA and say, listen, I want to make sure I got qualifications to fly this plane. They go, oh, do you have your license? Oh, yeah, sure, no problem. One little snag. I've got a Harrier jump jet. The guy goes, uh-huh. Yeah, buddy, I'm sure you do because you never see him. And this guy, he's like, no, really, I'm buying one. I want to fly it. It's a Harrier. And he starts laughing. And he goes, okay, what's your, what's your background? And I told him, well, I was in the Marine Corps. I've got about 400 carrier landings. I was a test pilot. I did B-52s, C-141s, F-15s, F-16s, A-7s. And he goes, okay, hey, you're the right guy. I'm going to let you fly the airplane. But I'll tell you right now, you're operating a very hot airplane in close proximity to Washington, D.C. We're going to be watching you like a hawk. And I've got no problems at all. If, if you're hot rodding around the country and breaking some of the regulations, I'll shut you down. Yeah, don't go back in time, old timer, and pull a Tom Cruise and do a fly over the tower, right? We've all remember that movie in Top Gun. <laughs> and I said, I understand loud and clear. Went over to England. It was in a big hangar, an abandoned military base, and walk in and there's this Harrier with one light bulb hanging right over top of it. Gosh, it's gorgeous, it's beautiful. I said, there's no reason why this airplane can't fly. The FAA is gonna let me do it. So we worked the deal, wrote a one-page contract in Sharpie because we only had one piece of paper and we only had a Sharpie. We shook hands on it, I went back to the hotel and this all took, this was four hours. I can't believe I just bought a Harrier. Now the real hard work starts. Now I checked out his website. He's still got two of them. He's got the two-seater and the one-seater. He's got a couple other planes. Looks like there's a bunch of ex-Marine, from the looks of it, pilots on there. He would be the lowest ranking guy that I can tell. I think there's a chief that flies too now. Must be a hell of a good time. Think about how he had to get this over here. He's about to say the fun part, but think about it. You can't just stick it on a ship like you would with the wings out. That doesn't happen. So now what do you have to do? Well, have to take it apart. We've had our share of critics. There were a lot of people that thought this would never happen. Yeah, Very no few kidding. People said it to my face, and it didn't matter what they thought anyway. It only mattered what we thought, and we knew we could do this. There's only one time since getting the airplane, getting it over here, putting it together, one time that I had the least little bit of doubt as if this is what we want to do that, and that's just prior to the first flight. I hadn't flown a Harrier in over 18 years. An entire Marine Corps career in some instances. So you guys tell me in the comments that we paid $176,000 for it. Shipping probably was $30,000. Disassemble is probably $20,000. You got to box it up. And you got to put it back together. Now it came with thousands of pages of manuals, but you got to have the right people know what the hell they're doing. Can't have some jackass like me go, hey, we got a bucket full of parts we didn't need. <laughs> We're on a short runway. It's only 4,100 feet, so I've got limited options. Once I push the throttle in the corner and once I accelerate past 100, 120 knots, I've got to go flying. It's kind of like the launch of the Get after it, LT. Once the go, you're going. This is the first well, time Colonel, anybody oops. ever flown an airplane with this kind of performance in the civilian world. And I knew that the issue was not going to be whether the airplane was going to fly. The issue was going to be, am I able to fly it? Are my reflexes still good enough? Or is my eyesight still good enough? What is going to happen when I jam this throttle into the corner? Do I really want to do this? Yeah, is it like riding a bike? You would think some parts of it are. Now, he's very familiar with the plane, you know, all the switches and gadgets, especially an older plane. You got to know where they're all at. It's not like you can just go off F it. It doesn't work that way. I suspect I'm not a pilot, but you ever look inside a cockpit of an F-16, they're small. He probably is not as felt as he was 25 years ago. God bless him. This is the point in overturn. And in that 10 seconds, I realized 
I've spent multiple hours in this cockpit. I know this airplane. I know where every switch is. I can find them blindfolded. I know what it's going to do when I put the nozzles down. I know what it's going to do when I put the throttle in wow. the corner. I know how it breaks. I know how to fly this airplane. So three, two, one, I slammed the throttle, the airplane jumped ahead, and three or four seconds later, I'm doing 100 miles an hour, and I'm airborne. Now, I suspect there's no civilian plane, even like these Gulfstream G4s or whatever the rappers talk about, that accelerate that fast. So he's flown a lot of planes, I'm sure. He's got that little Russian fighter plane he mentioned. It's probably pretty flippy in the air, fast, but this thing has got to be a rush. Haven't flown one since he was a Marine Corps pilot. I was euphoric. There is no way I could have done wow. this by myself. It, it's just like the military has a whole team and a squadron to do things, and that's what it's taken to get this airplane up. There are not many wives that would support their husband 100% on yeah. a project like this, but I wouldn't be here today if I didn't have the complete support of my wife. Today, we have three Harriers. One is fully operational and flying. Very soon, we'll have the two-seater operational and flying, and in the future, I suspect that we'll have a third Harrier flying. Now, would you want to be in the back of that two-seater? Let's just say Art here says, hey, you donated some money to a charity, disabled vets or something. We're going to let you ride in the back of the plane. You have to have some really good constitution. Because I've been sick on helicopters before. Rough winds in a plane, military plane, or bumps. I don't think I do at this age. I just don't think I have the stones. I guess I could. I don't know. I like the feeling. The temporary custodian. This is not the Art Nalls airplane. This is the Harrier. In five wow. to ten years, these will be the only Harriers flying anywhere. With the supplies we have, with the manuals we have, with servicing equipment, this airplane will far outlast my ability to be able to pass the flight physical and safety fly it. Eventually, my day is going to come where I'm not going to be able to fly this airplane anymore, but hopefully I will have passed it on to a younger generation who will be able to safely fly this airplane. Now, if you could buy one of these, let's say this plane, a Russian MiG, the cost to get into it is probably a fraction of the cost to maintain it, get it up to specs to fly it, to fuel it. But I guess if you can afford that shit, rock on. Let me know if you could get one of these. Which plane would it be? Let's say under a million dollars, one of these old planes that's out of service. Let me know in the comments and thanks for watching.